Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Take a scroll down and look at the videos and the things we talk about we're involved in, we're engaged in. There's over 70,000 hours of research that I've conducted over the past decade and a half. Well, basically, actually three decades, 30 years. Uh, almost 80,000, actually 78,000 plus hours of research and counting. And it, it, that research... Uh, is where we build our strategies, where we develop our programs like Black Men Lead, like the work we do with young black women uh, suffering from childhood sexual abuse and so many other things. Um, I'm not gonna get off into it in detail. If you followed me for the 12 years that I've been on social media, you know what I do. Uh, a bunch of you have sent people to you. Some of you have actually come to me for help. Uh, maybe you even uh, tuned in this morning where uh, I was interviewed on the things that are going on in the community, uh, i.e. Uh, based and surrounded by trauma and what we need to do about it. Uh, I will continue to be heavily involved. I will continue to push and uh, conduct research. Matter of fact, we're starting a major research uh, project was this February, so March. Um, and I'll be filling you guys in on that. But that's going to probably be a total of, it's going to be research and study. So it's going to be a minimum of 18 months or so that we're going to be going. Could be as many as 24 months uh, to conduct research and studies over time. I want to, uh, there's some things I need to understand and I'm going to do that. Then I'll report back and I'll then start the development of processes to intervene in areas that need intervention. Uh, with that being said, I want to talk real briefly. I see a lot of commercial uh, push for supporting black businesses, and I'm all for that. Uh, but I see a lot of rhetoric that's unfounded in true understanding of wealth. I think it's important for us to support black businesses, but it's also important to uh, understand that Supporting black businesses alone is not the panacea for the wealth, the racial wealth gap. The racial wealth gap is built a lot more on who buys from who. Uh, the racial wealth gap has to do with opportunity access. It has to do with structural, uh, uh, institutional, and uh, state and national statutes and laws and policies. It also has to do with black mindset. It's one thing to buy from a black company, but here's what we also have to be aware. We have to be aware in the sense that the companies we buy from, we have first have to understand the thing, the, 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 the old adage, all skin folk can kin folk. You have to understand that that needs to be certain qualifications. And I came up with this protocol uh, over 10 years ago that there has to actually be 
uh, certain uh, things that we can measure with a business to classify it as a black, a black business. A, a, there's a difference between a black owned business and a business owned by a black person. And we need to be able to distinguish the difference. We need to be able to know, and we need to have a list of these black owned businesses that we can go to. What am I saying when I say there's a difference between uh, a black owned business, a black business owned by a black person, a black owned business, it's owned by a person who has the interests of the black community uh, in mind. And it's not just a money grab. It's not just pushing or using uh, their origin or their race as a means of, you know, getting people to spend money with them. Um, that's that's something that you have to understand. In other words, so one of the things that I suggested when we first started talking about this uh, over 10 years ago as far as identifying black owned businesses and, and, and being able to qualify companies so that we can promote them, support them and send them to them and also apply, apply the same amount of pressure to businesses who are owned by blacks but don't have uh, black interests at heart. We can apply pressure to them economically by not supporting them. Uh, and that's the thing that I, uh, I, I'm i very avid about. If we're really and truly going to be uh, wealth minded, then we have to be economic minded, which means that we have to understand how we spend our money impacts us. And so when we spend into an economy that's not a black based economy, meaning that the functioning of the economy supports black interests, then we're virtually financing our own demise, especially when we spend into uh, economies that are operated and controlled by those who benefit from our demise or from our oppression or from our suffer from our suffering, from our incarceration, for, from our mis miseducation. Then we have to understand that as we pour money into those economies by spending into them, we are in essence, financing our own demise. So then what, what what must we do? What must we do? We must then sit up and say, okay, where can I spend that my money will not only support the owner, but more than likely end up being spent in some way that benefits me. Now, obviously that's not an easy thing at this particular point in time, but those are the thought processes that need to go into things like we talk about at the Odyssey Project in the think tank is how do we, how do we do that? How do we identify that? And see, the thing is we've gotten lazy economically. We just want it and wherever we can get it, and, and especially if we are price minded, wherever we get it, for the best price, that's what we're getting it at. That's why Asians dominate the beauty supply industry, despite the fact that we supply 96% of the revenue. So it's got to be uh, a, a, an effort to escape the lethargy of being uh, invested in how we spend our money, where we go, uh, who we who, who we spend with. We are going to have to do better in that uh, vein. Now, that is just the tip of the iceberg. One of the reasons why I created Legacy Wealth Academy was to teach wealth building on a grand scope. In other words, to teach you everything that those who have achieved uh, massive amounts of wealth know. Uh, and so that you start practicing it. You don't magically get to certain numbers that a lot of black people, black, black people think is impossible. You get there through systematically and consistently practicing principles and applying principles that work for anybody regardless. Now, obviously there are gonna be certain uh, elements and levers that are gonna be harder for us to access, certain levels that are going to be tricky. The real estate market is gonna be tricky because in order to get engaged in that there are a bunch of different things you have to have access to, but there are ways around it. I talk about that in my book, The War on Black uh, Wealth, uh, but I also address it in the curriculum in the Black Wealth Academy. Uh, if you have not signed up for the Black Wealth Academy, I encourage you to do so. I encourage you to do it because it's going to open up your mind to the way you move. It's going to put you in a better position to ensure that your progeny for generations to come is protected and is provided for. It's going to teach you why uh, we have lost so much because we don't understand trust. 
We don't understand how to set up trust. We don't understand what trust we need. We don't understand how to, the utilization of trust is how they perpetuate their wealth um, and so much more how to use insurance, uh, compound growth, and so many other things that are readily available to all of us and we aren't taking advantage of it. And yet we're complaining about the wealth gap. The wealth gap represents the power structure. And until we close the gap, we can't close the power structure. You cannot have empowerment without having resource. And that's the thing that I've been trying to get across to everyone. So again, I hope that you sign up. The link to sign up for that is in the description box. And that isn't even scratching the surface, but I just want to touch on that particular part of it because the idea, I just saw, I heard a commercial that's always playing on the radio in Houston about they, they name three businesses uh, every week uh, that are black owned businesses that you can support. And my thing is I'm all for that. That's cool. But uh, the suggestion is this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to build wealth. If you don't have a way that that money plays back into the community for the people who don't own businesses, only people that are getting money are the people that own the businesses. That's not a proper economic and community structure for developing wealth within the community. Now, granted, a part of that, a part of black group economics is buying into black businesses. The other part of black group economics associated with business is having businesses so back into the community. And one of the things that I suggested uh, t over 10 years ago when we sat down and talked about this uh, is that we uh, require anyone that we are promoting as a black owned business to put, to commit to uh, sowing a percentage of their profits every quarter back into the black community. And we also, uh, I'm saying we predominantly me, me and one other person at that time, then it kind of grew to the think tank it is. But at this time, it was just me and one other person. Um, and what I suggested is that not only do we have them uh, commit to sowing back into the community, that that would be an organization uh, in place that will determine what money is needed and then they would dictate where they would sow that percentage to. In other words, they would be subjected to saying, okay, th the money needs to go to residential development. The money needs to go to business development. The money needs to go to educational development. And so what happens is we can systematically assess our community for need and then take business uh, contributions that are coming from businesses that we are promoting and supporting coming back into the community. Now, obviously, we're a long way from that because we can't even get along. We can't talk to one another. We can't support things. And this is another reason why I'm so avid about us healing our, our wounds and getting past our differences so that we can get to a point to where we're executing real, true black group economics on a complete level, not just where we spend our money, but where that money goes, control it. And, and even, even in churches, if black churches aren't putting money in black banks that are against investing in uh, assets that come back and then are poured into the black community. In other words, if they're not lending to black aspiring business owners with an understanding that there are gonna be some challenges credit-wise, there are gonna be some challenges with assets and, and all that stuff, but having creative programs that allow them to do that without taking major risk. And those programs out there, white people use them all the time. So then what we need to do is be able to hold them accountable for what they sow into and build that. And, and that, that's churches too. If, you, if you're sitting up and you're taking millions of dollars every Sunday across the nation out of black communities and you're putting them into white banks that won't even lend to black people, uh, that is not acceptable. And the churches, just like businesses, need to be held accountable uh, for that. So there's a lot to be said. There's a, a lot more I wanna share with you guys, but I'm encouraging you. Uh, also, when you enroll in the Black Legacy, I mean, in the Legacy Wealth Academy to take this six month course, which is really about 24 month course crammed into six months uh, with ongoing support. So it's not like in six months you kicked out. You got ongoing support. It's a lifetime uh, engagement thing. 
Uh, but you can see it when you click the link, you'll see everything you're gonna get. This thing is comprehensive. I have literally contacted and talked to some major players, names that if I said you would know, to get their insight, to get how they think, how they move. Number one is I was do doing it to learn and make sure I can sure up what I'm doing and how I'm looking and how I'm moving so that I don't do what I did um, in the previous time around. This time I'm protecting, this time I'm doing what I need to do. But here's the thing. I put it all in there and not only are you going to get this course and you're going to know exactly what you need to do to build wealth and you're going to be able to teach it to your children and you're going to be able to perpetuate it in values and principles but you're also going to be able to perpetuate it in actual assets but you're also going to have enough knowledge that you can be a consultant uh, you're not a financial a, a licensed financial advisor but you are a certified consultant by the time you get there you can hold you can hold the conversation and have uh, a very very educated uh discourse with someone who's on wall street you know uh, i have those conversations all the time so that's the thing I want to get you to is that when you understand it, you'll normally start to move toward it. Uh, I just had to share that with you. I'm about to get out, go in and grab something that I'm going to go sit down at the cigar shop for a little while, talk noise to the guys. But uh, that's it for now. The link is in the description box. Also, show some love, show some support. Uh, we've got a major... Uh, project coming up with research uh, we have the ongoing projects in the community uh, and so much more we've been doing this now man for uh, a couple of decades plus uh, predominantly on my dime uh, we need support if we're going to take this thing on a national level we need more than my dime if we're going to take this thing on a in a comprehensive way and make it accessible to every black person who needs it we're going to need more than my dime if we're going to actually sit up and say we're talking and we really mean business about growing and becoming a powerful force in this country so that we're not begging for every little scrap that we can get, we're going to need more than my time. And on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a long one. Thank you.